All right, everyone, we are going to tackle today Julius Caesar, Act 2, Scene 1. And it's not important which play we're doing here. I just want to walk you through some of the things behind the scenes that I'm thinking about as I'm preparing a close read lesson for my students. So first of all, note the length. Uh, this is the length of a speech that I think is really manageable for students for a single class period. So think about your bell schedule and what you have to work with. Um, but this is one of my like a favorite length that I have. Um, the first thing that I really want to do when I'm working on a close read lesson is I want to make sure I know where it's going. Um, it's really easy to get distracted and start labeling things and saying, oh, wow, look at this, but not really know what the conclusion of the lesson is going to be. So my question that I'm going to want students to respond to at the end should be based on all of the things that are happening in the speech that are gonna help the kids arrive to an answer for this question. So there are really two ways of framing uh, your question at the end. Um, you can do this as a kind of, I think the easier way to do it is gonna be a character-centered question, uh, but the more complex way of doing it is an author's craft type of question. So for this particular passage, which I've taught a thousand times, uh, I could ask two questions. I could ask version A, I could ask, how does Brutus rationalize his decision to kill Caesar? Right? So this, this question is all about character, right? How does Brutus do it? Um, what you're going to get from this question the responses you're going to get from this question will be um, kind of summary paraphrase questions. I'm sorry, summary paraphrase answers from the text. And maybe that's where your students are and that's what you want. Um, at the junior level, which is what I'm currently teaching, um, I would probably lean more toward a author's craft type of question. So the way that that's, it's the same question but written differently looks like this. It would be, how does Shakespeare right? He's the author of the craft. So then I need the craft piece. So how does Shakespeare use figurative language? You could replace this with a specific device. So you could ask about metaphor. You could ask about personification. You could ask about imagery if you want kids to really zero in on one particular thing. Um, I'm going to leave it open for now just for demonstration purposes. So how does Shakespeare use figurative language to reveal Brutus's um, rationale, all right, for killing Caesar. Okay, so that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with B for purposes of this lesson because I want the students to be finding in this passage different examples of figurative language and seeing metaphor, seeing simile, and figuring out how those things add up to demonstrate, right, Brutus's rationale. So knowing this question is so vital before you really start digging in. Okay, so now I know uh, I'm working at the end, now I'm gonna work back to the top. So my directions that I need to get for students are gonna, I'm gonna tell them like what exactly I want them to look for. Um, so read and highlight the following. And I'm going to look for some very specific things I want kids to find while they're reading this passage and that I want them to look at so that when they find those things, it's going to help us answer this question. You also want to probably give the kids the question at the beginning so that they know the goal of this lesson. The goal of this lesson, the goal of reading this passage is to discover, right, is to discover the answer to our question. It's inquiry based, it's inquiry led, and that's where we're heading. So let's take a look at the passage itself and see if we can, you know, recognize some of the most important patterns that we can have kids look for that are going to help them give a sophisticated response to that question. How does Shakespeare use figurative language to reveal Brutus's rationale for killing Caesar? Okay, so what I do with my students typically is we do a first read, 
straight through. Uh, there's no stopping, no annotating, no nothing, just a read and an experience, absorb what you can. So that might be re-watching the scene on the film that you're studying. That might be listening to another um, performance on YouTube. It might be breaking the class, every student takes a different line. It might be having student performers. It might be you reading it out loud. There are lots of ways to differentiate and vary, I guess vary is a better word, to vary the way that you do that first step. So the first read is straight through. Okay, don't stop. The second read is when kids annotate. Okay, so I'm gonna just really quick erase my mess over here so that um, I have room to do all that fun annotating. Uh, and I will fix that second read we said was annotating. Okay. And specifically, I actually tell my students um, it's highlighting and annotating. So they have to highlight something and then also write something. They go together. Okay. So the speech goes like this. It must be by his death. And for my part, I know no personal cause to spurn at him, but for the general, he would be crowned. How that might change his nature, there's the question. It is the bright day that brings forth the adder and that craves wary walking. Crown him? That. And then, I grant we will put a sting in him, that at his will he may do danger with. The abuse of greatness is when it disjoins remorse from power. And, to speak truth of Caesar, I have not known when his affections swayed more than his reason. But tis a common proof that lowliness is young ambition's ladder, whereto the climber upwards turns his face. But when he once attains the utmost round, he then looks unto the ladder, turns his back, looks in the clouds, scorning the base degrees by which he did ascend. So Caesar may. Then, lest he may, prevent. And since the quarrel will bear no color for the thing he is, fashion it thus, that what he is, augmented, would run to these and these extremities, and therefore think him as a serpent's egg, which, hatched, would, as his kind, grow mischievous and kill him in the shell. Oh, it's so juicy! So, so juicy. Um, so all you nerds out there are probably nerding out a little bit, as you should, um, with with a lot of the work that, that Shakespeare's really doing right here, okay? Um, what stands out to me, right, other than the fact that this speech is totally doable for students, we can do this. There are two really important extended metaphors that are going to help kids answer this question. There are two things in Brutus's rationale that are happening here. We've got this metaphor here about lowliness and young ambition's ladder, okay? So as the teacher, we want to go through and figure out, okay, this is going to be a focal point, right? This idea of ambition, the ladder, and what's going to happen when Caesar gets to the top. This is this is an important moment that we need to make time for. Um, in close reading, it's easy to lose track of time, so that's really important. We also know this this message here, this idea, this metaphor and idea of him being a serpent in an egg, right? Waiting and ready to hatch. Those are two of the biggest reasons that Brutus gives in his, you know, self-talk about deciding to murder Caesar. So I know right now that the response to, to my question, right? That over here where I have my question here, letter B, how does he use it? Well, I want kids to say he uses two metaphors to, ra you know, to rational rationalize his thinking. And I want them to be able to unpack at least one of them, if not both, by the end of this lesson. So as I'm thinking through that, right, we do need to help kids probably get through a little bit of paraphrasing here. Right, so maybe I want to I want to dedicate a little bit of time to walking kids through like a, a back and forth discussion of the paraphrase of what's going on at the beginning. Right, so um, 
we know at the beginning he's already decided <laughs> Caesar must die. Um, and, and Brutus even admits here that he knows no personal cause to spurn at him. Um, so this is kind of an interesting note kids might share here about characterization. The characterization of Brutus. Um, he, he doesn't have anything against Caesar personally, but this is all for the general good, the good of the country. So Brutus uses this logic frequently throughout the play. So if that's something that you're looking at, like that's a good thing to point out to students that here is Brutus, right? Again, rationalizing through logic um, and Brutus's use of logic. right? Um, being crowned would change his nature. That's a little bit of a hint at what's coming down later. Um, you know, he says it's a question, but he answers that question by toward the end. Um, and so all of this here, even, even this line, um, the abuse of greatness is when it disjoins remorse from power. Again, all of this is demonstrated visually through metaphor at the end. So this stuff at the top, you guys, is hard. Um, it's a little bit wordy. It's, you know, it's Brutus is doing this mental mind game with himself. So don't let your kids get too lost here because they can ha handle these metaphors. And the way for them to handle these metaphors is to start drawing. So I have my students all on whatever we're using, um, hopefully paper. I like, I really like to do this stuff on paper. Um, and I like to ask the kids to actually draw out what Brutus is describing. All right, so we've got here in this metaphor, a ladder. Right, so let's just go ahead and draw our ladder. And as if you are bad at drawing, even better, right? Because then kids feel like it doesn't matter, right? This is not about being artistically inclined. Okay, so we've got this ladder, and this ladder is called ambition. And lowliness is down here, right? Hi, I'm lowliness. Right, um, you can tell the kids even too, this is humble, right, to be humble. At the bottom of the ladder is where you feel, right? Where you're feeling more humble, you're, you're, you're working hard, um, but you appreciate everyone around you. And as you start to climb, right? So my guy is gonna be on the side of the ladder. Like, oh boy, yep. And then kids will laugh and it's all good. <laughs> so I have, this section is here. Now the climber upward turns his face. I guess I should have made his face a little bit more up, but where to the climber upward turns his face, he's gonna keep going. And the upmost round is this rung, right? So when my lowly Caesar gets to the top, all of a sudden he turns his back, right? He can't see anything anymore underneath this ladder. There's nothing left for him to see because he's turned his back on the ladder. And by the way, all the other people that were down here cheering for him, everyone that he was ambitious for and to help, right? All of these people now, he's turned his back and he's looking into the clouds, right? He's looking this way. Um, and, and even here, this word scorn, scorning the base degrees by which he did ascend. He, he's actually, I, I'm not even actually sure how I would even draw this. I can't remember what I used to do, <laughs> right? But everything down here is no longer important. It's below him, beneath him, and not important. So if you can pause in this moment, that metaphor alone will help kids understand the rationale that Brutus has in why, right? He must be killed. Why Caesar must die. If Caesar's going to do this and get to the top and not help anybody, that's not cool. Now, is that a reason to kill someone? That's something for your students to discuss. And I'm not sure what they might say. <laughs> um, and we do the same thing down here with the serpent's egg. A great moment, for, again, for kids to draw. And so think of him as a serpent's egg. So we've got an egg here, right? And when it hatches, right, well, I guess we should put a little serpent inside. Okay, here's my, there we go. Look at that guy. That's my little serpent. Uh, when it hatches, though, he becomes, right, a big-time serpent, right? 
and we know serpents are snakes. We've got, there's biblical imagery that you could have kids look into. All kinds of things that students could relate and explain to you about what serpents represent and why that particular, uh, that of course looks more like a friendly little garden snake than it does a serpent, but <laughs> you get the point. Um, and so the idea is, right, we need to kill him in his shell, right? We need to kill him before, um, we'll do, I guess we'll do pink for killing. That's good. We're going to, we're going to get this, get this egg here, right? We need to kill him before he becomes the serpent, before he gets to the top of the ladder. The metaphors are both saying the same thing essentially, but the metaphors are what help Brutus think through and rationalize the decision to kill Caesar. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope this was helpful for you in your thinking about the way you're going to plan a close read lesson. Um, the last thing I want to do is now that we've kind of gone through and done a close read, let's go back to the directions that we would give our students. So knowing that there's two really important places to stop and that they're both metaphors, I want to tell my students to read and highlight for the following. Metaphors. And then maybe I want them to also look at one other thing. Maybe I want them to look at um, diction uh, and the specific kind of diction might be, um, we've talked a little bit about this idea of scorning the base degrees, um, killing him in the shell um, to put a sting in it. So maybe, so diction about danger right, or even warning, and have kids be looking for that as they read as well, because that's just going to add a whole other layer to helping them. You also could say um, the two specific image or two specific metaphors in your in your boxes as well. Whatever you want the kids to pay attention to, show them here, and then give them the question. I know this is kind of a crazy mess, um, but I really wanted to walk it through with you guys organically on the teacher side um, as you're thinking through your own lesson plans. These are the things that go through my mind as I'm working through the kinks and trying to get ready for a close read. I hope this was helpful to you all and we'll see you in the next lesson.